Dr. Claudici Mas! Oh man, oh, this is gonna be a fun fucking set. Let's do this, alright? Alright, a little bit about myself. I'm 33 years old. Yay! 33! And I'm not old. I know I'm not old. You know how I know I'll be old? Is this Pikachu that comes not stop for life insurance? <laughs> If that shit happens, we're all fucked. <laughs> I'm mad at just Ryan Reynolds' fucking AI generated voice. <laughs> He's like, Pikachu, you're kind of day. You can get that poor bitch cuter bad shit, or you can get that bougie LE4 coverage. <laughs> this is your plan of the day. I'm 33 years old. I can't aim after these goddamn schoolgirls anymore. I gotta aim for the mom. <laughs> I got an A for the mom. You know what, Poppy goes mom? <laughs> she can see it's Baku go. So you know that's Baku see. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, real shit, real shit, real shit. Do you think when Baku go was born, he had two little blue cords? Yeah. He had a red cord? <laughs> You think when Bob Bill was born, he had two of both cords? He had a red cord and a blue cord? And the doctor cut the blue cord like a dumbass before he explodes? <laughs> oh man, I love you here. A little bit about myself. I come from this place called Cerritos, California. Alright? If you don't know anything about Cerritos, I'm surrounded by Asians. Fuck ton of them, alright? Now, in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, Asian parents started naming their kids white and white names. I don't buy your name Lincoln. It's very presidential, very white representing. It's really something that's last in the park. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a silver. I trust you guys, I trust you guys. He was going out with this white chick in high school, and if Asians were naming their kids white and white names, why do people were naming their kids weird and weird names? Yeah. yeah. Because he was going out with this one chick named Freeway Williams. <laughs> I'm like, dude, if you marry that chick, she's be free of Freeway Park. You know that, right? <laughs> now, here's the thing. When they came to Freeway, they broke up. And my boy was distraught. So I had to sit my boy down. Give him a little coffee, too. I'm like, you know what, Lincoln? You tried so hard. <laughs> You got so far. But in the end, you just walk the fuck out of the room. I'm like, don't turn your back on me, I won't be ignored. And welcome to Weems are growing up. Holy shit, we are. God damn it. You like real shit. The power source for Weems is cringe. <laughs> There's a psychological concept called incongruency. If you don't know what incongruency is, it just means that your me mental self doesn't match your physical self. <laughs> if that's the case, that's where the co core of cringe comes from. When your physical self doesn't match your mental self. <laughs> we didn't solely get bullied for anime. We got bullied because we were cringe. <laughs> we got bullied we said hi in the middle of fucking dodgeball, right? <laughs> We got bullied because we fucking served a sendo when we punched this motherfucker, right? <laughs> oh man, because like growing up with anime, it fucks up when you set the time. It really does. At 10 years old, I thought I was going to trouble the world with my electric rat. <laughs> At 13, I thought all these girls were going to fucking be in love with me even though I have no redeeming qualities. <laughs> And at 16, I thought I'd get killed God for the sake of humanity. <laughs> None of that shit happens. None of that shit happens, man. Oh, man. But like my first anime convention that I've ever been to, I went to Anime Expo 2010, all right? I dressed up as this character from Prince of Tennis. He's an open-out player. 
He, he serves like me. He looks like me. I went to con, and they're like, can we take your picture? And I'm like, people want to take my picture? That warmed my heart. I felt like a fucking rock star. So next year, I was going to come out with a better cosplay. I was going to cosplay this dude from Chihazulu. He goes by Yukumon. He has platinum blonde hair. And I did not know anything about wings. <laughs> I thought I could bleach my hair the day before. Oh. And I was going to be golden. No. That shit came out narco orange. <laughs> I was going around con, no one knew who the fuck I was. And <laughs> myself was burning. <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> so I had to get a black box side to counteract it. It turned brown and I was like, okay, this is completely manageable. I go, I go to work and then my sushi chef looks at me. He's like, oh shit, what's up, Justin Tinder fat? <laughs> oh, that fucking hurt. A little bit about myself, I am a cosplay photographer. I can pick you through a little bit, okay? Now, if you look at my website, rebcreate.com, you try to look through my cosplay shit, it's in the corner. <laughs> for no one to fucking see. Because <laughs> no brand to these guys hire me for their goddamn money go like, oh, I like the pictures of Naruto. I like how you had an arm done on the goddamn arm. <laughs> and I've had to do so many odd jobs for, for photography. I had to do someone's Tinder photos. <laughs> He had one stipulation. I wanted to picture in front of a boat. <laughs> Plot twist, he doesn't know the boat. <laughs> Maybe that should happen though. Maybe that should happen. Now, when it comes to cosplay photos, I have a Google form that you can fill out, book me, and all that shit. For Anime Expo 2019, one guy filled out the form. And in the description, it says Mr. Old White. <laughs> I'm like, no fucking way. <laughs> I meet up with this guy at Con. It's a bald Mexican dude in a suit. <laughs> and his first word to me was Dale. <laughs> this motherfucker cost me a pitbull and an expo. <laughs> and I have to take pictures of that shit. <laughs> now, I didn't bring him to the convention center. I brought him to the Staples Center, alright? I brought four of my friends, made them look like they were taking autographs, and I photoshopped his face in the marquee. He liked those photos so much, he's like, I want to work with you next month. Are you free? I'm like, yeah. He likes those sets of photos, he's like, I want to work with you next month. And the next month, and then the next month. It's been four years, guys. <laughs> Is it four years I've been working with the same goddamn pimple popper from the last four years? I'm working on my face. It was pimple on the beach. It was pimple in the woods. It was pimple in the Black Lives Matter rally. And I'm like, dude, I have photographer friends, dude. Like, I get to prefer you to them. But he's like, no. You did judge me when I talked to the pimple. You made me feel welcome. And that warmed my fucking heart. That warmed my heart. But in the back of my head, I'm like, I'm this motherfucker's rental boyfriend. <laughs> I'll take pictures of his ass. He's paying me. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the thing, guys. Sometimes being a weed in dating gets in the way. Alright? It gets in the way. I was going over with this one girl. And she likes anime. And you know the series Hunter Hunter? Yeah. You can say Hunter X Hunter, you can say Hunter Hunter, you can say whatever the fuck you want. She was like, I was talking to this girl, and she's like, oh, I've been watching this one anime? I've been watching Hunter Times Hunter. <laughs> I have never ghosted a chick so quick. In my god cannibal life. Oh, man. Because that's real shit. I have three rules when it comes to dating. Three rules. I don't date cosplayers. I don't date comedians. I don't date anyone born after 9-11. <laughs> Those are my three rules. Because as I grow older, 
where my needs change. They change. When I was a teenager, I just wanted to fall in love. In my 20s, I just need a woman that sucked dick, that's all I give a fuck about. Yeah. <laughs> and now in my 30s, all I need is a woman with a better healthcare plan than me. Because <laughs> it really sucks my dental plan is Tylenol. <laughs> now here's the thing. When it comes to me and dating apps, I just throw the most random bullshit to the wall and see what sticks. I'll be like, going up to this one girl, I'll be like, hey girl, what that math do know? <laughs> Homegirl responds, same as your mouth. <laughs> Eat. <laughs> that was the cleanest side joke I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I didn't want to lose control. I was like, hey, so we're getting dinner? She's like, I'm free for Monday. We got that shit. Yeah. Oh, man. There was another chick. She was a heavy partner. And I'm like, hey, girl. I'm just a Hufflepuff to try to slither in. <laughs> that shit worked too. Fuck. <laughs> but have you ever fucked up on a dinner date? Fellas? Anybody? Yeah. Oh, God. Now, here's the thing with me. I love Japanese new music. I love Japanese rock. I love anime with these songs. The girl I was going out with really likes anime. So I'm like, okay. I don't have to cure my playlist. I'm going to play all my anime. I'll be the game songs. This would be great. We were in the car. We are jamming. There's one song that I thought said, I like Sound Spring. That's what I thought translated to. But fiction is important. You can take a safe word like salad and toss it in front of it, it's a different fucking meaning, right? <laughs> salad spring in Japanese turns into a new word. It turns into bashun. So, in my car, it translated into I love prostitution. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, what the fuck? And I changed fucking back to the next play song. And then my playlist started reading my mind. Every song turned into a Takion song. <laughs> Next song, please fuck me. I'm like, God damn it! <laughs> and this is how I know I fucked up on a Tinder date. She didn't ask me to drop her off at her house. She asked me to drop her off at the Starbucks next to her house. <laughs> and as I dropped her off, my playlist was still breathing my mind. Because as I dropped her off, it said, Eternal Masturbation. <laughs> I'm like, you know me too well, playlist. You know me too well. <laughs> oh, man. Now, this is when I go into the little paper. So, a comedian saw me put this on my story. Go like, this. He's like, dude, those notes look like a fucking school shooter's manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, okay, so, I know what I need to fix, I know what I need to fix, I'm going back to the gym, and all my gym girls are like asking me, what's your fitness goal, right? What is your fitness goal? Do you want to be cut? Do you want to be swole? And I'm like, nah, I'm approaching this like college, I'm just trying to do the bare minimum. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the fuckable. <laughs> There's two types of people in the world, fuckable people and unfuckable people, and I've been in the fuckable land for a long fucking time. <laughs> Do you know what happens in the fuckable land? <laughs> you develop personality. <laughs> <laughs> you develop a sense of humor. You think you're going on a date with a girl? Why are you playing therapist for four hours, motherfucker? That's what happens <laughs> in the fuckable land. And if there's any ladies tonight that want to prove me wrong, I'm taking applications, goddammit. <laughs> Now here's the thing, I haven't always been an unfuckable man, you know? I haven't been an unfuckable man, it's been great. But I don't run into the typical relationship issues most guys have. By technical standards, I'm a sugar baby. I'm not talking about the impending diabetes, but about the fucking mouth. <laughs> I date successful women. And successful women just want three things. Three things! They want to laugh, they want to travel, and they want to finish and give you all three. <laughs> well, I got so big that we're just going to take it off the basement. Now, the one thing I'll say is that has anyone had a 
Friends with benefits? Friends with benefits? Well, you got the wrong benefits. I thought I was going to sign up for one thing, but what I ended up getting was like positive affirmations and support for my dumbass dreams. I thought I thought I was getting an Airbnb, ended up getting a timeshare. A timeshare I can't fucking jerk off into. Now here's the thing. Everyone that talks about friend zone, you know? But friend zone's not that bad, at least you have a fucking friend. <laughs> Dudes are speed running enemies of real fucking fast lately, dude. You got, it's like 80% percent speed running the enemy zone. That's just an interesting concept, I'm gonna move on, alright? <laughs> now here's the thing. One thing I'm afraid about anime nerds is that some of you get to learn sex through hentai. <laughs> Now, learning sex through hentai is like learning skateboarding through Tony Hawk Pro Skater. <laughs> Unrealistic. Only difference is the Tony Hawk Pro, Sk from Pro Skater OST is dope. No one knows what the hentai OSTs are because we watch that shit on here. <laughs> and if you know what the hentai OSTs are, you have a fucking great I don't fucking have <laughs> Now, Here's the thing, this is when we go to the next stage of the manifesto. <laughs> now, here's the thing. So I take photos. And when I think of my favorite photo, I don't count it when I was a photographer. It was back when I was a server at a restaurant, all right? There was a drunk sorority at the sushi restaurant I was working at, and they're like, can you take our picture? Can you take our picture? And if you don't know what it's like to serve at a sushi restaurant, imagine a four to six hour game thing and you don't want to take it on the dick. <laughs> I was taking on dick. I was tired, I was frustrated, yeah, it's like, yeah, I'll just fucking take your photo. When I take a group photo, I have a 40 line on each thing. Yeah. What's the last one in the alphabet? Z. I love that line. It's witty, it gets people to smile. Also, bonus points if you know that's from fucking the fruit basket. Um, <laughs> it goes up. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I got that from that, that shit. <laughs> but it's witty, it gets people smile. Also, you get to pinpoint the stupid people in a group photo. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know the last letter in the alphabet. You don't know the last letter in the alphabet. I said that line and the girl's like, Can you do it again? Can you do it again? And I can't hit them with the same line, right? So I gotta change it up. So I go, Alright, what's the third letter in the alphabet? At my clockwork, the center girl goes, D. <laughs> and everyone looks at her and she's like, she's the dumbest person on the planet. <laughs> I take that photo, it's my favorite fucking photo. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> now, here's the thing because as I'm taking photos, I started realizing that you need to growing up. You weeds are growing up. Yeah. You know how you know that? I did a cosplay wedding. Oh. Another fucking cosplay wedding. Let me explain, all right? The bride had it all set up. It was Sailor Moon and the Sailor Scouts. Oh. And it wasn't the Sailor Scout uniform. It was a Hannah Alexander ornate gowns. Oh. It was beautiful. I loved it. The groom? Didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Didn't give two fucks. He showed up to the wedding as Goku. <laughs> and that's where the cotton movie begins. Because <laughs> the best man, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Standing next to him, Tommy Wise up in the fucking room. <laughs> and the last one was 300 Spartan. And he wasn't pushing 300. <laughs> He wasn't cut, he wasn't cut like his party, he was pushing 300, goddammit. <laughs> Another way that I knew you were growing up, I did school photos. I did school photos. I'd go to the school, I'd say the name, and then the kid pop up, and I'll take the picture. I'd be looking at the scene, I'm like, no fucking way. <laughs> Kasumi Hernandez. <laughs> 
I'm sitting here, Ned is right here. She pops up. I'm thinking like half Japanese, half Mexican. No, hundred percent Mexican. <laughs> and I'm like, are you like half Japanese? And she's like, yeah. My mom's half Japanese. My dad's half Japanese. I'm like, oh shit, they like you too. <laughs> I saw him like, no fucking way. Saucy Johnson. <laughs> Saucy Johnson is here. And this kid pops up and he's like, my name's Sasuke. <laughs> and my alias out of my brain is like, um, actually. <laughs> And the last name, I thought it was a regular name. I thought it was a regular fucking name. <laughs> CJ Smith. CJ Smith, he's come to the front. And this kid pops up. Naruto headband. Walks up the stage like this. <laughs> he's like, I'd rather be called by my actual name, Claude Jiraiya. <laughs> he doesn't fucking procreating, it's like scary. <laughs> now here's the thing. I posted that shit on Instagram, I posted that shit on TikTok, and that shit took a, a life of its own. Because <laughs> it has 1.5 million views, 200,000 likes, and the comment section? Fucking war zone. <laughs> the fucking war zone. One dude's like, if you're not Japanese, you can't name your kid a Japanese name. And then there's another person underneath, he's like, I don't give a fuck, I'll never get you the sandwich if I want to. <laughs> People are saying, avoid the comments, avoid the comments, but they're not aimed at me. And the thing I started finding out is that ends up being a confessional <laughs> for a bunch of cousins and, and parents of like what they named their fucking kids. <laughs> One person's like, oh, I named my kid Perry. Aww. And then her brother's Roxas. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, thank God it's not Sora. <laughs> thank fucking God. <laughs> And it's, it's, it's wholesome, it's fun. It's, we're going to go on to the next show because I, I can't squeeze any more out of that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Alright, when it comes to anime, there's five I'm afraid of, and there's five I'm not afraid of. But one five I'm not afraid of is a Dragon Ball Z five Yeah. Y'all yeah, know why? Because odds are, they don't know how to fight. <laughs> the one thing I'm scared to death of are the dudes that like love life. <laughs> because odds are, they own a gun. <laughs> and if you count the revolution for a second that you do with the blow sticks, <laughs> That's how many AR-15s they own. Oh my god. When I started cosplay photography, I liked Final Fantasy, I liked Persona, and I liked Love Life. I always loved Love Life 10. But, in 2016, when I got into the Love Life fandom, you know that, you know that, like, uh, Childish Gambino, um, meme of him bringing in pizzas? And the fish is on fire? Yes. That's what that shit felt like. Because <laughs> when it comes to being a photographer, in media, they portray us as creepy. Potential serial killers. And as someone that's in the field that looks at my peers, they're 100% correct. <laughs> they're creepy motherfuckers. Because if I had a nickel for every photographer that got canceled, and the fucking six years of doing this shit, I would have a dollar fifty. <laughs> For my non Asian folks, that's 30 people. <laughs> oh man, let me do some quick hit anime shit. Have you, have you guys seen Fruits Baskets? Yeah! I love Fruits Baskets, but if you break down that story, it's fucking weird. Because <laughs> yes. it's about a homeless high school girl. <laughs> That has her pet rat and her pet rat uh, got a cat trying to fuck her. 
Has anyone seen Blue Lock? Yeah! I love Blue Lock. It's so great for an asshole like me. <laughs> but we know that's gay bait. We know that's gay bait. Look at the fucking acronym. So, you got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, man, have you guys seen Ranking of Kings? Yeah. I love Ranking of Kings. Ranking of Kings is just for medieval force dunk. <laughs> they just have Lieutenant Dan and Bubba as one character. <laughs> All right, gotta go back to the manifesto. How you guys feeling? Oh, we're here. Fuck. This is one thing I've never revealed on stage or even tried to attempt making material about. For three years in my deep depression of 20, in my 20s, I was a brony. shit I've ever seen with that fucking fandom was that they did a Japanese dub of My Little Pony and they had all the heavy hitters they had fucking Buggy from One Piece fucking voice one of the main, main villains for, for the Japanese dub of My Little Pony and you know the Japanese discourse for this move the, the subs are buried in the dubs <laughs> The Japanese are like, fuck this Japanese voices, we, we want the subs. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of that shit. I mean, uh, I got them psyche for that shit. Alright. Has everyone played League of Legends? Yeah. 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 Okay, this is done to shit, okay? <laughs> League of Legends is addictive. It's so addictive. It's a lot like cocaine. <laughs> if you do it with your friends, it's completely fine, but if you do it by yourself, you have a fucking problem. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna end on this bit, and you guys are gonna question my goddamn sanity, alright? <laughs> so, gosh, as I'm doing photos, I started doing photos for comedy shows. There's a podcast and a comedy show. And the podcast host said, Cigar Dude said he's gonna smoke his force getting live on stage tonight. <laughs> I'm like, no fucking way. <laughs> he breaks out a meth pipe, loads his foreskin, and then two audience members are like, we'll smoke the foreskin with you! <laughs> oh, God. I'm taking photos of this shit. <laughs> I'm like, this is something weird. But this is the second weirdest thing I've ever taken photos of. <laughs> Ever take photos of? I took photos of a furry side of my to build for Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> I got called evil by this furry. He, he wanted me to do this concept. And I'm like, I'm not down. I'm not down. But everyone has their price. <laughs> everyone has their price. If you ask me when I was teenager to suck a dick, it's a billion dollars. In my 20s, it's one million. <laughs> now in my 30s, came right around, I'll fucking think about it. <laughs> so I'm all like, I don't want to do it. He's like, what's your price? I want to aim for the fucking win. I'm like, all right, fuck it. $2,500. He's like, done. I'm like, fuck! <laughs>
The shoe was his 2017. 2018 comes around, he fucks a 15 year old. Oh. He's a pedophile, fuck him. Oh. I'm gonna tell this to everybody, alright? <laughs> we get to the shoot, and the furry wants to fuck him without a condom. Oh. The fuck fuck him without a condom. And he's not, he's not down, but then the furry says, Oh, I'll double your price. Oh and then Justin's like, Woo! A thousand dollars! I'm being paid 2500 to put the fucking butt in. <laughs> His price for unprotected butt sex is $1,000. <laughs> we do the shoot, and at the end of the day, I have those photos in my hard drive still. <laughs> but if you think about it, if you think about it, I have photos of a furry sodomizing pedophile. <laughs> If that's not justice, I don't know what the fuck is that. <laughs>